and for this clay here, it just apply a little heat and back off. Give it time to cool off. Eventually, the heat will penetrate the clay, and the whole piece will come up, become nice and soft. If you have a steady flow and constant heat going through the clay, you're going to singe the clay. You're going to end up burning it, and you do not want that. The clay becomes it'll bubble, and once it hardens, it it really gets hard and you can't really play with it after so you basically have to cut it out and that's you know, that portion of the clay and the legs are being supported with a, I believe it's a 3 8 I might want to say a quarter inch also in diameter aluminum rod, but more, most likely it's a 3 8 for this scale. And it does a fine job supporting my piece here. Without the armature in there, the rods, the legs would give in. I would be in tears because all that worked for nothing. Now, if the piece was much smaller, chances are I probably wouldn't use a rods in there or anything. While I'm at it, I'm applying heat to both legs. I don't want to kind of um, work on the whole leg. Let me uh, back this up so you can see. from there but this leg feels a little, a little more muscle not muscle bound but well yeah muscle and a little bigger bone I'm not sure which one I like best I'm not sure how they prefer their dogs big bone uh, medium bone or but I kind of like this one here some of them more or less try to emulate what I have here on this side Give it a little time to kind of penetrate. That is the heat. Oh, somebody wrote something. One sec. Uh, let's see. Uh, I want a pet bull. Huh? We're going to get a shit pod. Where are you? Where are the puppy paws? <laughs> oh my. Oh. Anyway, hi guys. I will look back every once in a while and answer your questions. This is a Radin Rich bag. <laughs> uh, we do have a lag time here, I believe. I'm not sure if it's as bad as yesterday. Yesterday, uh, Justin and Oveto, two other artists, were on Skype with me while I was streaming, and <laughs> that really created about a 10 minute lag time on here. So, which is kind of comical where we're on Skype speaking in real time. While everybody else is watching us 10 minutes later, it might have been a little confusing for some of the viewers. So what I'm doing here is trying to make both sides symmetrical. I'm applying more pressure on this here. Here is just basically I'm feeling, unless I need to make a correction, I'm applying more pressure here too and kind of do the same on this side here. So right here, I feel I need I'm just about right here. It's a little too bulky, so I'm going to apply more pressure here and kind of try to get to the same feel I have on this side. And if you notice, if those that have dogs out there, you'll notice that your dog's paws 
and are not, not all the same. I have four English Bulldogs here at home, and everyone's paws are slightly different. Uh, there's one that possibly has the nicer paws, at least to what my, I like, while the other one has kind of uh, sloppy paws. One has more like web licking paws. And once I'm done with the paw, uh, paws here, I would have an approval from the breeders and let me know what they prefer because this piece is basically for that community, the Richback community. And if I do not fabricate or sculpt this piece correctly, they kind of frown on the pieces. So it's constant changes, corrections. And again, it's, you're constantly using both hands to make these pieces symmetrical. Now the cool thing about this particular clay is once it's nice and I don't want to say warm but soft, you could pinch it to get the shape you want. The clay is made by Chavant. This is an NSP non-sulfur pasteline. And we don't have sulfur in this here because when I make my molds, if you have sulfur present in the uh, clay, when it makes contact with the silicone, the silicone will never cure, then you end up trashing your work there as far as just the silicone is starting from scratch. And those that have made molds in the past know that the materials for making molds, silicone, what have you, are pretty pricey. So you don't want to screw up. Now in case it did have sulfur presence in the clay, you would use a sealer to spray onto the actual piece. You could use a spray or you could brush on it depending on what you're using. If the piece is really big, I would most likely use a, uh, a shellac in a can and use a brush and just brush the sealer on there. But in this case, this piece is going to have so much detail that I'm going to use a uh, release agent made for molds, for mold making, and I'll just put a slight mist on it. Technically, some mold makers will tell you you do not need it, but I always apply some kind of release agent on my pieces so when I demold the pieces, it come on quicker and there's no chance of basically adhering to the actual silicone or destroying my piece. I try to get the piece back out of the mold in one piece, otherwise it'll come out in pieces, literally. Let's see, we're getting there right now. And this one appears to be thinner. It's a little too wide, so I'm going to take my caliper again. i take some more measurements. Some people like to eye it. I don't because we're playing with shadows here, the lighting, and it'll play tricks on you. See? It's almost there. In fact, that's pretty good. Now, what some people like.